Let's make this really cute and easy and quick jellyfish pattern. I am using loops and threads yarn from Michaels with a five millimeter hook. And we are starting off with doing a magic circle and we are doing eight single stitches inside of that magic circle. And if you want a slowed down video on how to make a magic circle or magic ring, click this link here and we'll send you straight to it. After your eight single stitches inside of your magic circle, you want to close it just by pulling it, but if you have Chanel yarn like me, sometimes it doesn't work, because if you know, you know. As you can see here, it was not very nice to me, but we made it happen. Now, we are going to be doing an increase in every single stitch. So we are going to be ending up with 16 single stitches. So there's one, two, three, Four, and the bumps, each little bump that you see that I'm going into is a single stitch that we made in the previous one for the magic circle. And to save on time, I do do my single stitches over the tail from the magic circle so it doesn't move later on. That just saves me time so we don't have to weave it in later. After we do that, make sure you count each of the little bumps to make sure that you have 16 single stitches. I have to count twice because I accidentally counted one twice and so I thought I ended up with 17. Um, but make sure that you only have 16 if you have one more, one less, like go back and fix your problem. You wanna set your jellyfish up for success. Now onto row number three, we are going to be doing a single stitch in the first one and then in the second one, we are going to be doing an increase. So there's our second and third. And now we're going to go back. We're going to do a single stitch and then another increase. And we're going to do that all the way around until you hit 24 single stitches. And here is number 24. So now again, go around, make sure you have 24 single stitches because that is the last time we are going to be increasing for right now. Next up, we are going to just go around the next five rows 24 times, just 24 regular single stitches so we can make the body a little bit longer. So again, rows four through eight is just 24 single stitches. I'm gonna speed up the video to the ending of row eight so we can get onto it. I will be stopping after each round just to ensure like I did my 24. It's a little quick pause in my video. Um, but I honestly just do 5 times 24 and I just count the 120 stitches in my head because that makes more sense to me. You do what makes more sense to you. If it's stopping and counting 24 and then like either using a poppet to pop down that you did one row or doing a tally mark on a piece of paper, you do you, whatever makes the most sense in your brain. All right, after fighting my baby for the table and to finish recording, we are moving on. We are going to be doing like the frill or at the very bottom. And the first stitch is going to be a regular increase, front loop only. And then the second stitch is going to be a half double crochet increase. And we're doing front roll only the whole way around row number nine. And then after that is going to be a regular increase and then a slip stitch. And then we're going to repeat. We are going to do a normal increase. One, two. And then we're going to do a half double crochet increase, which is just two half double crochets in the same stitch. And then a normal increase.
two single stitches in one stitch, and then a slip stitch. And again, all of this is working in the front loop only. Okay, so now that is our last slip stitch, and this is what your jellyfish should be looking like. Kind of looks like an ice cream top, and you can make this one an ice cream, which is pretty cool. If you would like to see the tutorial to make an ice cream out of the top of the jellyfish, let me know. Um, but now we are working in the back loop only from row nine because we dropped that back loop, but now we're just going to call it row 10. And we are going to be doing a single stitch and a decrease single stitch and a decrease all the way around, but with a little twist. In your decreases, you're gonna be chaining 23 because those are gonna be the leg. So there's our first single stitch and now here's a decrease. Before we move on, we are chaining 23. And once we hit the very top of it, we are going to be working from the second chain from the hook and we're gonna be doing an increase in each chain all the way down. Creating the increase in each chain all the way down will be making your jellyfish tentacles have its spirals, and that's just what makes it have such cute character. So here, this is the second chain from the hook. You're going to be inserting your hook in there and doing one single stitch, two single stitch for an increase, you're going to continue down the whole entire chain. I'm not going to be speeding up the first tentacle so you can see what I'm actually doing. But for the rest of it, I'm going to kind of skip since it's just being repetitive. But you just see that I'm going in each chain and doing an increase, which is again two single stitches in one stitch. Okay, so now we are getting to the very end. This is our last increase. It's also sometimes a little bit hard. As you can see, I was having a hard time. Um, but there's one and two. And now we are going to be slip stitching into the decrease just so there's no holes in our pattern later on. And now we're going into the next chain or next stitch and we are doing a single stitch and one more decrease and repeating the pattern. We are going to chain up. 23 and then we are going to start in the second chain from the hook and we are going to do an increase all the way down so now i'm going to be skipping to the very last tentacle 
if you want to replay the first tentacle, go ahead as many times as you need, but we are going to be skipping ahead. I will be showing though how to do the last tentacle as well. So here we are, we are doing one of our last slip stitches. Single stitch. And then our very last decrease, which it is hidden for me for some reason. And then we are going to be chaining up 23, working in the second hook, or sorry, second chain from the hook, and doing an increase all the way down. So I'm going to be having this video, again, play very slow, so you can see what I'm doing. If you don't want to watch what I'm doing, you can just skip ahead. Something that I have found, though, when I am working my increase all the way down is to make sure you are letting it curl and let it what it wants to do naturally. Um, that way you don't have to fix them later and they're not flopping and curling and being awkward all around your hands. As you can see, I am kind of guiding it a little bit with my thumb, um, just kind of pushing it off to the side so it is going to be spiraling down. That just it helps me out later on and it's not in my way and it does make me frustrated. All right, now here we are coming up to the last few increases that we are doing, and we are doing our slip stitch, and that is our last tentacle. I like to look at them. I just think they're so pretty. Um, you don't have to do that, but I just also double count that I make sure that I have eight. You should have eight of them. Um, and now we are going to be doing a single stitch and a decrease all the way through and when you are working with this you want to make sure that you fold your tentacle up towards the top and you are working behind your tentacle um, that way you're not going to be accidentally folding it in and hiding a tentacle or anything like that um, but we are just going to work all the way around for 11 stitches um, it's not going to add up completely we are doing a single stitch and a decrease five times and then adding one more single single stitch to make 11 stitches total and I am speeding up this part a little bit just because I am a little slower for this part but I also want to clarify to make sure that you were working behind your tentacles because it just kind of will mess up the pattern and it won't look as flush and as clean afterwards so here we are. I pull out a little bit um, just to make that a little looser because now we are going to stuff the jellyfish. I normally fluff up the stuffing and then I stuff in kind of a lot. It, that's just what works for me. And then afterwards I go in there and I pull the stuffing apart. I got a little hair for some reason on my video. It was stuck to my phone. <laughs> but I pull the stuffing apart in the middle so I can kind of fill out the sides more. And then I go ahead in that hole that I just created and I stuff that more. And I have no idea the girl 
who I saw this video on on Instagram, I believe it was, but she said to close your eyes and feel it with your hands because your hands will feel the holes that you are missing um, rather than your eyes. Um, I really hope I'm following her on Instagram. If you know who I'm talking about, please tag her because I really would love to... She um, amazing. Like, she's the one that helped me out the most <laughs> with learning how to stuff. Um, but after you do that, we are going to be doing five decreases. And then you can do a single stitch. I honestly just let it go. Um, and then I fasten off and I sew it shut. I know it sounds a little chaotic. You can do, instead of a single stitch, you can go one more and do one more decrease so it, you have a little bit tighter of a hole but it doesn't matter very much because when we fasten off we are going to be looping through each stitch and pulling it tight um and if you accidentally like didn't make your stitches tight enough or whatever happens and you end up with a small hole in your stitching like i do that is okay i will be showing you how to fix that and hide it and nobody will know at the very end of it so here is one more decrease, and I break it off because I'm a heathen. So Chanel yarn is just so easy to break, and I pull it through, which is fastening off. And now we are going to insert our hook because we do not, we don't do sewing with Chanel yarn. If you know, you know. And we are going to be just pulling it through. We go through each single stitch and pull it through. Um, this is just what helps me the most I have found um, to fasten off and then sometimes I don't go all the way through every single stitch um, before I pull it I just pull it and then I finish going through each of them as you will see here because um, that giant hole in my stitching that you see is where my first stitch started so now I'm gonna go through two. Oh, one. now I'm gonna go through two and we are now going to be closing up any holes that we see after or not after as we are fastening off which is kind of like a two for one it helps out a little bit something i forgot to mention is eyeballs if you are wanting to add in safety eyes do that in row about row number 11 um maybe row number 10 in all honesty like before you add in the tentacles but do that then i like to do it between rows five and six and i like them about three stitches apart sometimes four depending on how large of eyes you're doing i like to do smaller eyes about 16 millimeters um you can um do larger they look super cute if you are wanting to embroider or do felt eyes, I recommend obviously doing that after you fasten off and you stuff your jellyfish and everything like that. Um, but make sure you check out my YouTube video on how to embroider eyes. There you have it. Here's our Jeffrey the jellyfish. Thank you so much for watching my YouTube tutorial and like and subscribe um, for more videos. And let me know if you have anything else that you would like to see now.